Hello everyone, thank you for being here with me today. I am enamored with nature and its benefits for wellness. I know that we can achieve well-being together in a way that is more practical and easier to access, in a way that isn't so bogged down by devices, social media, or the daily to-do list. This is a topic that is so special to my heart, and accessing purpose in life and helping others to do the same is a life goal of mine. And I believe that we can do this partially through outdoor activity. I remember playing hide and seek sports and having scavenger hunts and adventures as a child. And through these experiences, I was able to work on problem solving, communication skills, coordination, strength, item finding, imagination, and creativity. And as an adult, these are skills that so many of us work towards to help us in our professional and personal pursuits. On one particular experience, I went hiking with a friend in upstate New York to Catterskills Falls. It was a chilly spring day and we went with my parents and older sister. My friend and I decided to go off alone, walking up the river by stepping from stone to stone, hardly keeping our balance. At one point, we ended up at a very steep hill, using trees to help us stay upright and keep moving forward. It felt like we were trekking up the highest mountain, and we were afraid we were going to slip, get lost, or never make it to our goal. Getting there to the waterfall took us a little over two hours, with a little bit of help navigating from others, and eventually, we made it. The sheer exasperation coupled with such feelings of achievement, physical exertion, strong friendship, and appreciation for the stones, river, and trees was enchanting. We still talk about that experience to this day, and we still love running, exploring outside together, and natural conservation. Here's a picture from one of our more recent adventures. Now, let me tell you how I got here. I'm an occupational therapist who graduated from Alvernia University in 2017, and I pursued this field because of its relevance in my own personal life, and just from seeing how OTs scaffolded and helped a family member find and illuminate their shine. I worked in the pediatric outpatient clinic setting and schools for over five years, and now I'm working in home care for pediatric and geriatric clientele, working in a nursing, nursing home and covering outpatient clinics. I am a CNS certified, which is certified neurospecialist, and I'm a somatic yoga therapist in training. I am recently a Reiki master as well. One of my most special involvements is that I'm on the leadership team of OTEA, um, a group dedicated to advocacy, learning, community, and wellness for all through climate action within the lens and scope of occupational therapy. Now, I wanted to move on to our table of contents. Today, I'll be discussing four major points, nature's role in well-being, occupational therapy's role in wellness, skills developed through nature connection, and collective interest in human nature connection. So right now you might be wondering how nature can positively impact well-being. Here are some of the key facts. There are a variety of studies pinpointing the importance of early participation in nature settings for children. According to Summers, Vivian, and Summers, children show improved learning, resiliency, mood, and self-esteem through nature involvement. Other benefits from the interaction with the natural environment in childhood include longer lives, increased quality of life, connection to each other and to society, and even having healthier diets. On the other hand, it was find, found by Justy that children are impacted by disconnection from the natural environment. This can impact children's understanding and appreciation for, appreciation for animals, nature, and nature conservation. Think of all of the beautiful experiences awarded to children when they are able to participate outdoors. Think, to back, think back to some experiences you've had as a child. What were some of the most memorable, active, impactful? Were they outdoors? Pro-environmental actions and connection with nature are so important for well-being as an adult as well. 
We want our children to grow up with skills, but also meaningful experiences and hobbies. We want our children to want to do the right thing, to make connections, and to find meaning in their everyday life. There are also a variety of important physical and mental wellness factors impacted by nature engagement in adulthood. Just to share a few, nature-based guided imagery, walking barefoot in the outdoors, and morning light exposure can be so powerful, according to Brown, Chevalier, Nugent, and Brimer. Do you remember warm summer days where you walked on the beach with no shoes? For example, one warm summer day, I went hiking without shoes, and it was one of the most magical and meaningful experiences that I've ever had. The interaction with textures, temperatures, the ability to feel and wade in the water was so calming and enriching that I think about it often. I also personally try to get natural light in the morning and at night when I am walking my dog. I also found that limiting my phone and computer to warm light only, limiting the light use in my home at night as well, have really helped my sleep. I also try to do paperwork near open windows to get extra natural light during the day. I wanted to share one of my favorite quotes by Mary Riley. Man, through the use of his hands, as they are energized by mind and will, can influence the state of his own health. According to the Occupational Three therapy framework for wellness is described as an active process through which individuals or groups or populations become aware of and make choices toward a more successful existence. Wellness is more than a lack of disease symptoms. It is a state of mental and physical balance and fitness. Achieving wellness is more than just a healthcare initiative. Wellness adds meaning to our lives Wellness makes it possible to couple functional movement, functional health, with purpose. Understanding the means to an end of wellness, like how to achieve it, is imperative to a meaningful life. As we understand things that improve our sleep, our learning, our emotional resiliency, and connection with others, it helps us to make those connections, help us form better, more conscious, healthy habits that allow us to live healthier and richer lives. To give you all a practical example, such as nature-based guided imagery, I will now guide us through a nature-based meditation with a Reiki practice before beginning. During this practice, you're welcome to keep your eyes opened or closed, whatever feels right. And notice what it's like to feel the sensation in your feet, perhaps feeling the feeling of your feet on the floor, up on the chair, or feeling the softness and warmth from your socks. Now notice what it's like to feel into the bones that extend from the bottom of your pelvis, where we're sitting, what it's like to sit on the surface that you're on, starting to feel into the distance between your feet and the bones that you're sitting on. Lastly, I invite you to feel into the sensations of your neck, jaw, and head. Maybe they're supported by your hands or noticing what it's like to bring awareness through touch to these areas. I invite you to imagine a bright, strong beam of light connecting your head, sits bones, and feet. You can imagine this beam however you would like, perhaps a certain color, texture, image or emotion accompanying it. And now notice as this beam of light begins to connect to these grounded parts of your body, to the ground and even deeper. Imagine what it feels like for the beam to root you into the earth and bring support, compassion, and love. How would it feel to take a few deep breaths into your nose or mouth, letting your back and stomach expand as you connect to the earth and the feelings of grounding. How would it feel to imagine yourself breathing in golden light, letting that light circulate to your three grounded points, your feet, the bones you're sitting on, and your head and your neck? What about bringing it throughout your body? Realizing that this light is always available to you, it's already within you, and it's also within nature. Now I invite you to think of a nature space that calls most to you. 
Take some time to find that. What do you feel like when you're there? Are there any sounds or smells? Perhaps it could be the saltiness of the ocean or sounds of leaves blowing in the wind. Do you notice any textures or tastes? What else do you notice about this sacred nature scape? Take some time to be there. Feeling into the beauty of this space, I invite you to think of an intention for today. What would having that intention give to you? Perhaps this is what your body is calling for now. Starting to wiggle your toes, your head, or you're letting your body shake or move. Begin to come back to this physical space. Beginning to feel the textures and hearing the sounds of your space. And now we'll move into what is occupational therapy's role in wellness? Within the occupational therapy practice framework for OT is defined as a therapeutic use of everyday life occupations with persons, groups, or populations for the purpose of enhancing or enabling participation. The occupational therapy practice framework for stresses the importance of helping clients maintain their occupational th- occupational identity, understanding that purpose, purposeful, valuable activity participation is a key driver of health and wellness. As we touched on earlier, a variety of skill building opportunities and benefits can be derived from engagement with the natural environment, albeit in a myriad of ways. Occupational therapy practitioners are trained in something called activity analysis which makes us experts in breaking down the steps of a task and the skills required to complete those steps. A few months ago, I was lucky lucky enough to develop and implement a nature learning class at an outpatient pediatric clinic called Learn Through Nature. I wanted to share a few activities we completed. Pictured here is a tree rubbing and bark identification activity we did as a small group nature walk in a suburban area. During another class, we were able to go outside, collect leaves, and follow it up with a leaf identification book. The children loved matching their leaves to the picture in the book. We also did a myriad of guided nature imagery techniques when we weren't able to get outside, including leaf breathing, nature yoga, whether it was being a rock or doing bunny breathing, animal sound identification, and then pretending to walk just like that animal. It also included two other simpler activities to incorporate to either get outside or bring nature inside. Sometimes it's as easy as creating a fun movement activity outdoors or participating in a fun nature-based activity indoors. Through these activities, we were able to help facilitate increased motor planning, coordination, interpersonal and social emotional skills, nature connection, including respect for nature, enjoyment na- enjoyment of nature, and even mindfulness. Here are two additional ideas of ways to include nature without bringing it to the forefront. Sometimes it can be as simple as getting some extra time outdoors, as you see in an obstacle course we made, or even talking about nature and educating on the seasons. Through my own experiences with nature, such as volunteering with the New York State Parks and Recreation, I found opportunities to test my coordination and hand skills, visual perceptual skills, and locating different types of weeds, engaging in teamwork, learning, endurance, and strengthening. In the far right picture, I had to use my visual skills to locate weeds in the multitude of areas that looked the same. It was actually pretty difficult. Focusing on activities like that, helping me to really engage, allowed a sense of flow and mindfulness. Here are two more examples of some big jobs we did at these parks. These include a fall leaf cleanup and digging up of invasive plants for the creation of a rainwater garden. I was definitely tired at the end of these. Both areas were filled and we were really able to see our accomplishment and see the great work that we did. Keeping that in mind, 
Next time you see children dancing in the rain, climbing trees, or even making mud pies, let them be themselves. They let them play. They are learning and developing critical skills they need to succeed in life. So we've now reviewed the myriad, myriad of benefits of human nature connection and ways to incorporate this into childhood and adulthood. By connecting with nature and supporting others in doing so, or modeling, living by example, with all of the beautiful benefits, we can show others how to, too. So what's next? Habit is the cree driver of change, not motivation. There are only a certain number of decisions that can be made in a day. Over time, actions become habits, meaning that they become automatic. Sometimes the easiest thing to do is to pick one act at a time and let that integrate into your routine, letting it become a habit. What is one thing you can integrate into your lifestyle? I recommend volunteering, maybe finding a community, picking up litter on the beach, or at a local park, volunteering with your state park association, a local park's nature learning center, or even searching online for opportunities. Or even what if you run your own? Meetup and volunteermatch.org are also great ways to get involved. You could even commit to getting more natural light. This could be taking a morning walk, limiting bright lights in your home after a certain time of night, turning all your devices to warm light, having a plant on your desk, or even working near an open window. And connecting to the outdoors through hiking, morning light exposure, grounding, reading a book or taking a class on nature, gardening, guided nature imagery, or meditation. I'm hoping that together we can collectively become a more mindful, connected group of humans with rich quality of life. This is your call to action. Thank you for being here with me. And thank you for Bill Wong for all of his help and to all of the wonderful professionals I've worked with in the past and for you for being in the audience. If you have questions or comments, feel free to reach out to me via email or on my LinkedIn page. And thank you so much.